The bedroom of a modest Los Angeles duplex is strewn with cardboard boxes and a dismantled bed frame. Rod cuts open a box full of clothes as Mary enters carrying a larger, heavier box. Nobody said it was going to be easy. You're the one who wanted to move in together. You weren't fighting hard against it. She drops the box among a row of others. Why so damn many clothes? I'm a fashion plate. She embraces him from behind, kisses his neck, and pulls him to the floor. Why any clothes? Later that night, Mary yanks a dangling string to light a bare bulb in the closet. Her dresses are hanging, but the floor is stacked with unopened boxes. It's only a walk-in closet if you can still walk in it. Rod tucks in a sheet, then collapses face down on the bed. I'll make room. I have a system. Well, it better be a small system. We don't have room for anything else. She pulls the light string, but it breaks with her tug. She drops the severed end on Rod's back. In case you want to turn me on in the middle of the night. Why wait? He blindly reaches out, finds the back of her knee, and pulls her to the bed. She belly flops on top of him, twists his arm around his back, and wraps the broken string around his ring finger, cutting off the circulation. Do you, Rodney Dace, take this woman, this champion, this Amazon queen who's superior to you in every way? Not crosswords. In every way, as your eternal ruler, to serve and obey. Death is better than bondage. To entertain and to worship. (laughs) Wait, wait, do you smell something? Oh no, you're not farting your way out of this one. I'm serious, wait a minute, I smell something. She relaxes her grasp and inhales deeply. A putrid stench attacks her senses. What is that? I don't know. Garbage? Get off me. She rolls off him, and they both patrol the room, sniffing the foul air. Rod recoils at the closet. Smells worse in there. What the hell did you pack? Just clothes and shoes, I think. I don't know. It'll have to wait till tomorrow. He reaches high, pulls the remaining end of the string, and shuts the closet door. The next morning, Rod tosses an empty cardboard box out of the closet. That's the last of them. Nothing decaying or rotting. Mary flattens the box and uses it to fan the air towards her sniffing nose. What was it then? Still don't know, but it's gone now, right? Without a trace. Maybe it drifted in through the window? Maybe it crawled in through there. He points to the square attic door in the closet ceiling. A four-inch stain darkens one of the corners. Don't even say that. That stain kind of looks like a hunting knife or maybe some weird writing. Wait, I think it says something. Are you trying to freak me out? Because I'll pack up the car right now. It says... Rod, I swear to God. It says, Mary is a tripper. She smacks him over the head with the flattened box. That evening, Rod knots the closet light string back together while Mary reclines on the bed, leafing through an Ikea catalog. We can make more rack space if we box some of our seasonal stuff. Knock yourself out. He pulls a heavy wool dress from the rack. I think you're about seven months from sporting this number. Maybe longer. There's no winter down here. Too bad. I kind of like this one. He pulls the dress close, smells it, and winces. What's wrong? This dress smells like last night. No! Bring it here! She grabs the dress and takes a series of deep sniffs. I don't smell anything. Rod leans in, but the dress smells clean. He steps back in the closet and is overcome with the stench. It's not the dress, it's the closet. It's gotta be coming from up there. She points to the attic door. Rod shakes his head and slams the closet door shut. Let's not jump to conclusions. You're such a wuss. What? You heard me, you're being a wuss. She stomps to the dresser, grabs her purse, and stirs through its contents. Look, let's wait till tomorrow. If it's still there, I'll take a peek. She pulls a small flashlight from the purse. You wait, I don't want my stuff smelling like that. The attic door cracks open just wide enough for the flashlight to sneak through. A narrow beam scans the darkness. A faint scraping sound breaks the silence. The flashlight follows it to a heap of scrap wood, dust covers, and bits of... See anything? No. I don't smell anything either. Yeah, me neither. Mary and Rod watch the exterminator gather the last of his tools in the front yard. Don't know what to tell you. Couldn't find a hint of rodents. Sign at the bottom. What about mold? Or something rotting? Nothing. 
Pretty near the cleanest act I've ever crawled through. Sorry I couldn't help you out. He takes the clipboard and hauls his gear to his truck. What the hell could it be? Carbon monoxide? That's odorless. Maybe the neighbor's cooking? In our closet? Maybe the smell travels from their closet to ours. Isn't that her over there? A shrouded old woman whispers something to the exterminator as he climbs into his truck. He nods, then they both stare at the couple before he drives off. Come with me. Rod follows as Mary approaches the old woman. Hi, I'm Mary and this is Rod. Do you ever smell anything coming from your closet at night? Gory. Gory. Well after midnight, Mary throws an armful of clothes on a pile heaped in the corner. Why do I always get the freak show neighbors? Rod sniffs around the empty closet, smelling nothing. Shh, she could hear you. I don't care if she does. She doesn't scare me. I don't think she's trying to scare you. Bullshit, you saw how she's looking at us. She knows something. And I think that rat killer is in on it too. Maybe I'm in cahoots with both of them. Don't start with me. Does that stain look bigger to you? I said don't start with me. I'm not. I just want to know if it looks any bigger. Oh, for Christ's sake. She stomps into the closet with Rod. I think it might be growing. Is it growing? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe a bit darker and a bit... Wait. It's back. Smell it? Yeah. God damn it, it's back. I hate this fucking house. Just take it easy. You take it easy. I'm not living in a death house. Don't go getting crazy. What did you just call me? Just meant... What did you just call me? Later that week, Rod seals a cardboard box with tape. Room is full of other moving boxes. Mary grabs a large potted plant and nods to her portrait on the wall. Take that painting. I made it for you. I don't want it. Two moving trucks are parked outside. Mary drops the plant in the passenger seat of one of them and seatbelts it in. A third moving truck parks behind her. Inside is a young couple. Mary approaches them. You the new tenants? Yeah. We're early. Sorry. Look, I'm going to level with you. Don't move in here. Why? Bed bugs? Worse. The smell of death leaks out of the closet every night. What is it? I don't know what it is or where it comes from, but this place is possessed. If you don't believe me, just ask her. She points to the old woman and her daughter digging in their flower garden. You've been warned. Mary climbs into her truck, slams the door, and rolls away. I didn't smell anything last time. Did you? No, but we weren't in there long. Shit, we've already signed the lease. Maybe she's crazy. Let's find out. They climb out of the truck and walk up the driveway. Hi, we're moving in next door. No response from the old woman or her daughter. That lady just told us there's a smell that comes from the closets. Do you know anything about that? Goody. Goody. I'm sorry, I I don't understand. The daughter whispers to the old woman and she whispers back. She said it's a light bulb. Tim pulls the string, illuminating the bare bulb in the closet. He leans close, taking large sniffs. After a moment, he recoils in disgust. Oh, that's disgusting. She was right. Someone put a 100-watt bulb in there. It was melting the plastic socket. It smelled like death. Let me know when you unpack the bulbs. 